Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on today's edition, we're going to start off with the club announcement that's come out just a little while ago. Edu has officially been named as Arsenal's technical director. Uh, the Arsenal media team have put out a statement in which they say Edu is joining us from the Brazilian Football Confederation as our first technical director. The former gunner, a member of the Invincibles, comes to us straight after helping Brazil win their first Copa America in 12 years. He will be on the flight to the United States as our preseason tour gets underway on Thursday. In his role as technical director, Edu will coordinate the work of our first team coaching group, the academy and player scouting and recruitment in order to oversee the constant building up and efficient strengthening of our squad now, Raúl Sanlehi, head of football, of course, at Arsenal, has been speaking uh, to the club's media team. He says we're very excited that Edu is joining the team. He has great experience and technical football knowledge, and most importantly, is a true Arsenal man. He understands the club and what we stand for to our millions of fans around the world. His arrival is the final and very important part of the jigsaw in our development of a new football infrastructure to take us forward. He will be working closely with Unai Emery and the first team coaches and will play a relevant role leading our football vision and ensuring we have and follow a solid philosophy through all our football activities. So this is not a surprise to, to anyone. We've been speaking about this. There have been reports for ages that Edu was lined up to take the position, of course, after the conclusion of this summer's Copa America. Last night, he announced he'd be leaving the Brazilian national team set up and lo and behold, today, we have an announcement and that suggests, doesn't it, that this deal was done quite a while back. Now, Edu has said, uh, Arsenal has always had a special place in my heart and I'm thrilled to be returning to this great club in this new role. We have a strong squad and some very talented young players with fantastic people at every level. I'm looking forward to helping make a difference. So uh, Edu saying all the right things, of course, uh, spent five seasons with us as a player, making 30 appearances in our 2003-2004 unbeaten season. Always a bit of a cult hero was Edu. Um, scored some really important goals for the club and, and put in some really great displays. So pleased to have him uh, back in and around the club. As I said, it's come as no surprise to me. And uh, fingers crossed, Edu coming in now means that we'll sort of get our, our asses in gear in terms of the transfer market. Perhaps uh, that's been a cause of the, some of the delays in terms of some of the transfer negotiations that we're said to be involved in. But Edu is in through the door now and, and fingers crossed Arsenal uh, can now get on with things and build for the 2019-20 season. Let me know your thoughts on this appointment. Are you pleased with it? Do you think Edu is a strong addition to the team? Uh, let us know, of course. Uh, hit us up uh, in the comments section below or, of course, on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. Now, the next subject I'd like to touch on today is concerning the protests against Stan Kroenke. Now, I know it feels like we're probably talking about this every day at the moment, but it's a debate that just isn't going away. Lots of Arsenal fans unhappy with the way that Stan Kroenke's been running the club, me included. Uh, but I made the point earlier on social media, and I, I want to share this with you guys too, that it's kind of a bit hypocritical, isn't it, to say, you know, hit him where it hurts, hit him in the pocket, etc, etc. But then to still turn up to every game, buy Arsenal merchandise, buy food and drink within the stadium, spend fortunes traveling up and down the country and across the continent to watch the club. At what point as a fan do you put the greater good ahead of your own, you know, you go into the games and say, I'm actually that pissed off that I am now willing to boycott Arsenal games that's what the Blackpool fans did remember when we played them in the cup uh, last last season and none of their fans turned up they eventually got rid of their owner and, and the attention that that received was incredible and that you know was a strong uh, of course uh, motivation for the the owner to sell now I'm not saying that Stan Kroenke is going to sell if you or me don't turn up to the games but I'm curious to know, are you at that point now where you'd rather not go to the games if it affects Stan Kroenke? Because I don't think a lot of people are. And I think pointing the finger at Stan Kroenke all the time, you know, it is right in many ways because the, the direction of the club is 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 bad. It's It's been heading in that way for quite some time. And with him now the sole owner, you fear it will only get worse. 
But equally, Arsenal should have achieved their targets in the last two or three seasons in spite of Stan Kroenke's ownership style, in spite of the fact he's not willing to pump money in, in spite of the fact that we're running on this self-sustaining model. And it's mainly down to bad management on the football pitch. And, and I think that you need to take that into consideration. As I've always said, I'm not pro Stan Kroenke. I'm not happy with lots of things that he's done and the way the club is heading. But do I think he's the reason we didn't make the Champions League last season? Absolutely fucking not. So that's just my view on that. I think that, you know, either you're really fed up and you're going to stop going and you're not going to give him any money and you're not going to put any money into his football club. Or you go along, you continue going on the weekend, enjoying uh, watching your team. And you kind of, you know, whilst you can talk about Stan Kroenke, you need to stop using that as, a, as the primary excuse for everything. So I don't like Kroenke. I don't like the direction the club is going in. But I just don't understand how you can be staging a protest yet turning up to every single game, buying Arsenal merchandise, Arsenal refreshments in the stadium, etc, etc, etc. Because you're ultimately funding the evil that you want to see removed. And whilst money is coming in and that club is turning over a profit and, and the balance sheet looks healthy and Stan Kroenke's asset uh, continues to be worth the, the vast amount of money that it is, we're never going to see the back of him. Let me know what you think on that too. Um, is it right to to be protesting but still you know, forking out thousands of pounds each season backing Stan Kroenke's football club? Is it wrong to do so? Let me know what you think. I just feel like I'm not at that breaking point yet where I'm at the point where I want to decide that I need to stop following my team to make myself heard. I, I'm not that disillusioned. Maybe I'm not as disillusioned as others, but I feel like Arsenal's problems uh, you know, are more on the field. Uh, yeah, you may argue that it stems from Stan Kroenke ultimately, but the management by Arsene Wenger and Unai Emery in the last two seasons has been poor. And that is the primary reason for why we're in this predicament. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Just a couple of other topics I'd like to touch on uh, on today's podcast, uh, starting with the future of uh, the young Polish under-21 international Christian Bielek. He's impressed at Charlton on loan. He impressed in the under-21 championships, but it appears he has no future at the football club. Now, lots of you were hoping that he would come back in, uh, fill that sort of uh, central defensive or defensive midfield role, uh, depending on where he was needed. A bit of a utility man in that sense. But it feels like, uh, you know, Christian Bielek won't have a future at Arsenal. And I know that we don't know that for sure, but the reports that we're hearing today suggest that he's been told there is no place for him in the first team squad. We've heard of other youth players, uh, the likes of, you know, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith Rowe, uh, Willock, Nketiah, etc., etc., being told that they are moving into the first team. They've been given new squad numbers, etc., etc. But Christian Bielik's name is not on that list. Now, I did call it a few weeks back when I said that I didn't feel he was going to get the guarantees that he himself needs uh, to commit his future to Arsenal. And I understand why he wants out. If he's not going to play, you know, why would he want to stay? He's got to that point now where he's he's impressed. He's got a little bit of a reputation going uh, in his favour. And it probably feels like, from Christian Bielik's point of view, well, if I'm not going to get a chance now, I'm never going to get a chance. And he has to do what's right for his career. Now, I know... A lot of Arsenal fans will be disappointed by this news, will be disappointed to hear that Christian Bielek uh, will most likely be leaving Arsenal this summer. Let me know your thoughts on it. Would you have kept him considering uh, it doesn't look like we're going to spend mega amounts of money this summer? Would you have kept him considering we are short in the central defensive position, short of quality anyway, perhaps not so much in numbers, but certainly in quality? Let me know what you think. Leave your comments in the comments section below. And I'd like to hear from you guys on this one. And you can tweet us too, if you prefer that, at Chronicles underscore AFC. Now, the last topic, fourth and final topic, is uh, Hector Bellerin is said to be ahead of schedule in his recovery from that horrible injury he suffered last season. He's uh, reportedly earmarked the home game against Aston Villa on the 22nd of September as the game he's hoping uh, to come back from. So uh, Arsenal will 
be without their first choice right back for the first month or so of the season. Uh, but I still feel like we need to get someone in to cover that position uh, for when Hector Bellerin is not available. I'm not sure that Ainsley Maitland-Niles is the answer there uh, going forward. But let me know what you think on that too. And uh, that concludes today's Chronicles AFC Daily. Sorry, it's a little bit late coming out. Uh, I was doing some filming for 90 Min down in central London uh, with troops and uh, Specs Gonzalez. And that'll be out very soon uh, looking back on last season I'll be sure to share the link when that is uh, available uh, until then um, take care and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another Chronicles AFC Daily ciao